Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We're painting a cotton candy sky uh, landscape today. So we're starting off with, uh, first of all, I'm in, what do you call this, uh, portrait position. And I grabbed some yellow on my paintbrush and I'm just uh, plopping that down right around the center of my painting and I'm just moving upwards with that yellow. So we're just establishing our background colors right now. And this is going to be very important for our entire painting. So I'm morphing this, morphing, blending it into a soft pink. I wanted it to be a little softer than that, but what can you do? Um, and then that is going to go into like a, a deeper like magenta pinkish red situation. Now, this is the case in, uh, or painting that you would want a mist bottle if you have one because we need to maintain a very wet background as we work with this painting. Um, so I'm just moving on now and I wanna basically reflect, oh, you know what I did wrong? I forgot to leave a little circle for a sun. Ah, oh well, you can do that if, uh, if you remember to do so. I did not. So I'm just mirroring the uh, same pattern on the bottom here. I'm actually going to add some nude in there. Make it a little bit more gentle of a transition. I'm going to forego that dark magenta color, although I just picked up a lot of pink and it looks very similar to that magenta. Um, so I'm going to try and soften that. A little bit. So we really want to keep this wet. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about this. So what I'm going to do and is just let this dry, I think, and then um, do another layer. I'm thinking about it. I don't have too much more time to think or it's gonna start drying. Um, okay, maybe do another layer right now just kind of on top because we need to keep this sufficiently uh, moist in order to achieve the dramatic effect that we're going for in this painting so i'm just trying to think on my feet i was originally just going to apply water but if i did that then it would I, I, I know I wouldn't like how it looks. So I'm just applying paint on top. Watering it down a little bit. You can use a mop brush actually, it might give you a, a more fluent gradient than this because this is a bit harsh up here I don't like how intense this is so I'm trying to lift some of that off while maintaining the moisture it's tricky maybe if I grab some nude I 
and then I'm, ah, oh my gosh. I just want to wipe off this uh, background or it might bleed back onto my piece of paper. Anyways. Okay, so once you have your background established, you want to work kind of quickly because um, we have to do, we're using the wet, wet and wet technique here. Um, so I'm taking my original pink that I used, but a lot more pigmented this time. And I'm applying it, we're, we're creating the clouds essentially now. So I'm just applying that pink, um, that's a bit too intense, just to the bottom portion in these small horizontal brush strokes because I want these to be like low, low hanging clouds. And then as we start to go a little bit north, we're gonna switch to a very intense version of the color we used at the top here. So it's like a reddish magenta almost. And um, I'm gonna apply that as clouds and these ones are going to be a little bit bigger. So they can even bunch up at the top here and just become super intense. But again, you want to work at a decent pace so that your painting doesn't dry um, before you finished all your clouds because then that would be unfortunate, wouldn't it? I am going to go over those original pink ones they're not really that they faded which happens too easily with watercolor so I do want to mimic a little bit of that cloud as a reflection in the bottom portion You don't have to go crazy with it. So I'm gonna grab some purple now. And I'm going to apply that purple on the top portion of my clouds. Cause I want it to look like there's like a, a stormy shadow almost. You might have to go back with your original pink or magenta, whatever color you were using, and just help blend that purple in so it's not very contrasty. I'm even applying some of that mixed color onto the, the little pink clouds down below. And you can reflect some of that onto the bottom por portion um, if you want. So I'm just keeping uh, with the application of of the purple because as it as it spreads out, it fades. It's not as intense, and I really want it to be like this intense stormy cloudy look you can even add black i'm gonna do that because the purple might just be a little too weak for what i'm going for here and then again you can grab that original magenta and try 
to blend them together if you wish. So that's a nice, I don't like how this looks like it's raining down. I don't know why my cotton paper does that. Again, why I'm not the biggest fan of arches. Sorry, arches. But I've had definitely, I've definitely used better cotton paper. For much cheaper, I might add. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that because if I keep going, I'm just going to totally cover our sky. That looks a little bit more intense than I was intending anyways. Um, and, you know, everything's starting to dry. So I'm going to let this completely dry before we move on to the next uh, section. Okay, so actually what I quickly started doing, because I really didn't like that like bleeding of these clouds. So I went in with a dry brush and I just picked a little bit because if I went in with, with moisture, I ran the risk of creating that cauliflower effect because I wasn't sure how dry the yellow was. But with the dry brush, I just picked it up and it let this like white highlight almost underneath, which actually looks quite nifty. I don't know how it's going to dry. I'm a little nervous about that. But um, I do like the intense contrast that that adds. So I'm actually doing it under a lot of the clouds. So I'm kind of hitting two birds with one stone. Someone was offended by that, uh, that, what do you call that? A metaphor or that saying. I obviously don't mean any harm to the birds. Um, so that, yeah, that looks quite nice. I'm happy I did that. Okay, so I think my painting is mostly dry. I hope it's fully dry. We will find out. I'm taking some black watercolor here and we're going to paint on a horizon line. So you want to kind of have it somewhere in the middle. Um, just paint it right across. Like that, and then you can add the top, um, you know, like details, whatever you want to add. Uh, it could be mountains, it could just be like a hilly, hilly type of scape. I think I'm gonna have. Maybe like a taller mountain, mountainous range on one side and then it'll just taper off to hilliness on the other. You can have some black reflections if you wish by lightly running your brush horizontally back and forth. creates a nice extra little detail element there. And you can put whatever you want in the foreground. I kind of regret not painting a sun earlier. That would have been really nice. Like, I guess I could still add it with acrylic paint here somewhere if I wanted to. And actually that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I've got my acrylic paint here, handy, ready to go, so why not? I'm just going to paint it on, it's going to be right here.
So it's going to be a setting sun. So I have painted in my sun here and I want to add some white reflections. So I'm taking my acrylic paint. Why is it blue? Um, and I'm watering down my acrylic paint, which for some reason is blue. Or it turned blue. I don't, you know, sometimes I think I had blue in my paintbrush at some point and I never washed it out because it's super, super blue. It's very annoying. So yeah, sorry, I'm watering down that white, the white acrylic paint, and then I'm just going back and forth with it. You might not even have to water it down. If you have cheap acrylic paint like I do, don't even bother watering it down because it won't show through. So yeah, just run, run your brush kind of back and forth horizontally. Anyway, you can keep going that until you're happy with it. I'm not happy with it, but I can't be bothered. I have my nice sun and that's what matters. So I'm just gonna switch to painting my foreground details. I do wanna focus on uh, using black to make it all stand out. And I'm gonna have reeds or like long grasses. That's what I'm gonna have in my foreground. So I do wanna have a bit of a base. So I'm just painting, just covering the bottom with black. And I'm going to switch brushes here. And I'm going to have my reeds, some even overlapping my horizon. You don't want this. I don't know if you can see that, it's like when you run out of water on your brush, it creates this streaky brush stroke and you don't want that. So make sure you have enough pigment and water on your brush so that it completes the entire stroke. So some of them you can have you can have them turn into reeds. Some of them, you can just leave them as these long grassy strands. So this one I'm going to, uh, I'm just using my quadruple zero brush and I'm painting these long hairline uh, brush strokes out to create, kind of looks like wheat actually. got corn growing. Anyway, not all the grass has to reach like up and above the horizon. Just do whatever you feel like doing. I'm gonna have them taper a little bit so that they don't all go to the top. Okay. 
my brushes are very used and old so a lot of them just don't a lot of my brush strokes are not very nicely ended so I'm just going back with a thinner brush and fixing the ends so they're nice and uh, pointy So as I mentioned, I'm trying to taper off the grass so that it doesn't um, come up as high on the right side or you can choose whatever side you want. Half of it is because it's less work, you know, um, but it also adds something, something else to your painting, a little bit of variety if it's not exactly the same the whole way across. I'm gonna zoom out just so you can see a bit of the it like image and uh, on a larger scale, not scale. You know what I'm talking about, so you can see the whole painting. Okay, I might add one more reed over here, or I don't know what these are called. Long grasses, cattails, I, whatever, you can call them whatever you want, but I'm adding another one there. And I think I quite like that. I quite like how that turned out. I hope that you guys did too. Uh, please let me know what you think in the description. If you like it, then hit like on this video because it helps me out. Subscribe and uh, let's hope the summer looks like this. <laughs> Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one.